Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of UA Eats. I'm UA, and I am not in Manhattan today. I am in Brooklyn, and not just Brooklyn. I'm not talking like Williamsburg or Bushwick or anywhere, you know, anywhere like that that's become pretty trendy. I am in Bedford Stuyvesant, also colloquially known as Bed Stuy. And yeah, this is actually a quickly developing neighborhood that was once the home of Biggie, notorious B.I.G. But uh, yeah, it's definitely changing in many ways, uh, as you can see by Shake Shack over there. Now, Bed-Stuy is home to a pretty large Muslim population. And what brings us to Bed-Stuy is not to try kebabs or chicken over rice or anything like that. We're here in Bed-Stuy to actually eat Jewish deli food. You heard me correctly. We're eating at David's Brisket House, which was a Jewish kosher restaurant. But what is so interesting about this restaurant is that it transitioned into being a halal restaurant. It was an old school Jewish deli, kept kosher, and then it was purchased by Yemeni Muslims. I believe they were from Yemen and they made that transition from kosher to halal. I hear that they still make mean deli food, they still make a great pastrami, they still kept a lot of things the same, if not improved a lot of things. So some people say that David's Brisket House is actually the best pastrami in town, or at least up there with the best one. So we are going to find out for ourselves if it's all it's cracked up to be. So let's check it out. All right, so we have arrived at David's Brisket House and uh, yeah, you know, they sell pastrami and uh, brisket and corned beef, but it looks like they're kind of advertising some uh, St. Patrick's Day specials. I guess corned beef, uh, you know, not just a Jewish deli food, I guess it's also a uh, Irish food, especially since on the left here, they also got some, uh, I can't really see what that platter on the left is, but they also have a shepherd's pie. So, you know, really advertising the crossover between corned beef here and corned beef in Irish cuisine. And uh, yeah, it looks like they are certified halal, but I don't see any kosher certification, so uh, they may not be kosher anymore, but they are halal, so, so interesting transition there. But uh, yeah, let's give this place a try, why don't we? I'll do one small pastrami. Rye and mustard? Yes, please. And I'll also do a small corned beef. I want to try it. Uh, do you offer any other deli foods like matzo ball soup or anything like that? No? No, right now, no. Just we do have, we have soup, but we have the chicken noodle and we have the maraca tahini desu. Yeah, it's like chickpeas and noodles and vegetables. Oh, let me try that. Moroccan, it's called hari haria? Moroccan hari desu. Hari soup, okay. Thank you. No Thank you. All right, guys, I am inside David's Brisket House. Uh, gonna try to keep my voice down a little bit since it's a little bit on the quiet end in the restaurant. Don't wanna disturb other people's lunches. Look, the pastrami was only 13 bucks. Same with the corned beef. In an era of $28 pastrami sandwiches at the more famous and touristy spots, that's definitely a rare find. Although, you kind of get what you pay for. I mean, I mean at Katz's and 2nd Avenue Deli and those places, uh, they're gonna be overstuffed sandwiches, but here they're kind of more normal portions, which might be okay since it's probably not good to stuff yourself full of all these cured meats anyways. Not good for your health. And by the way, the reason why this is on a bottle of water is because I was trying to get some good pictures for thumbnails and B-rolls and stuff, so this was just the best way I could prop it up for lighting. <laughs> And uh, I did end up getting the soup on the side as well. Now this is a, uh, I'm gonna butcher this pronunciation, so anyone who knows how to pronounce it correctly, I deeply apologize. But I believe they called it a Moroccan haria soup. Always looking forward to try things like that. Really broaden my cultural horizons, so. Let's rest this pastrami on its little uh, water ramp a little bit longer, why don't we? Since this soup is probably not gonna stay much warmer, let's try this haria soup. And it's looking like a really pleasant, sort of lentil-based soup. I think it looks like it's a little bit tomato-based as well, so let's try this guy, why don't we? Ooh, a really thick and viscous soup. Real hearty for lunch. 
By the way, I do want to quickly comment that it's a pretty nice space. It's not the biggest restaurant, but it feels cozy and it's decorated well on the inside. It kind of feels neither Jewish deli-like nor, I guess, Yemeni Moroccan food style-wise, I guess you might say. It kind of almost gives me like a, like a smokehouse, like a southern smokehouse feel to it, but that's just me. First spoonful of the soup. You know, it's not bad. I've never had a Moroccan hadiya soup before. Am I saying that right? I've never had a soup like this before, and it actually tastes really tomato-y. Like if you ever have like, a, you know, your typical Campbell-style tomato soup with a grilled cheese to dip it in, it really does sort of taste like that. But with some added dimensions, of course, it's, uh, you know, not just a thick tomato soup, but it's, like I said, it's very much like a lentil soup, like a bean soup, and also chock full of other vegetables. Uh, you know, I think some of this is, uh, I think some of this is fresh tomato, maybe some other sorts of beans and the like and things like that. I think some celery. So yeah, it strikes me as a really healthy yet hearty soup at the same time. Obviously this is just me and you know, I've never had a hadia soup before. So uh, you know, I don't know how it's supposed to taste. Uh, to me, I find it a tad on the viscous side, a tad on the thick side. And uh, to me, I feel that, you know, the really, really thick tomatoey texture it does kind of make it hard for the individual vegetables they added to really sing. Like I feel like I really do just taste like a thick tomato soup with just some vegetables thrown in, you know, for, for healthy and heterogeneity measure. But it does taste good. I mean, honestly, it's such a thick soup for $6.99. Honestly, this soup could kind of almost be like a light meal. You're not really in the mood for a bigger sandwich. You want to stretch the wallet a little bit or you're just not super hungry. Maybe you had a big breakfast or, you know, you're just, it's just one of those days where you're not really craving a bigger lunch. Yeah, I mean, this could definitely pass for a nice, fulfilling and hearty, yet also light at the same time and relatively healthy lunch. To me, still a little bit on the thick, uh, tomatoey, viscous side, so if they could somehow make it a little bit lighter or at least add more vegetables to balance it out or maybe add some spices and seasoning to uh, really combat that super thick tomato, uh, you know, tomatoey flavor and consistency that really is overpowering. But hey, that's just me. I mean, let me know in the comments if you guys have drank this before or drink it often, and maybe this is just the way it is. So I'm glad I tried it. Always happy to try some new foods. And next up, let's try a corned beef, why don't we? And they are advertising this corned beef, not just from like a Jewish deli perspective. This corned beef is being plugged as like a way to get your Irish cuisine fixed. So time for a bite of the corned beef. The uh, bread actually feels thicker in your hands than it looks. You know, I kind of thought that the bread was gonna be more uh, squishy and more uh, pillowy, but the bread is good quality. It really is a nice, thick slice of bread. All right, bite numero uno. Oh, wow. Oh, wow, that is nothing short of fantastic. Let me tell you, I much prefer pastrami to corned beef. I'm not usually, I mean, I like corned beef, but I'm a bigger pastrami guy, but this corned beef is fantastic. I think this, I might even say this is one of the best corned beef sandwiches I've had. Not only does it have a nice pleasant color, but it just really comes apart in your mouth. Like it has that perfect texture, that perfect flavor. Everything about this sandwich is just well balanced. Like everything about it, the texture, the flavor, like, let me show you. Just look at how easily this is gonna come apart. Just look, look, <laughs> I even pulled it without much force. I just kind of like very casually pulled it and it just came apart just like that. And then just look at how easily this guy separates. Just a really come apart in your mouth corned beef sandwich. Seasoning is on point. I guess maybe it could be a tad more salty, but that's probably just me. Actually, I take that back. I really think it's perfect. I think it's perfectly salted, you know, not overly seasoned. Like whatever the seasoning they're using in this is just kind of in the background pleasantly, you know, like an unsung wallflower doing its part. It's got the right amount of fat versus leanness. Like as you can see, it's relatively lean, but it's got some bits of fat there. As you can see, like there's bits of fats interwoven here or there, and it's it's all just perfect. The price, guys, it's just such a fair price. 13 bucks for this. This might not be as big as Katz's Deli, but I think this sandwich is 
definitely big enough for most people. Outstanding, guys. I don't care if it's kosher, halal, or Irish. Faith in Bogora, am I right? Hmm. It was a bit out of the way to come here, especially from New Jersey, but it was totally worth it. It was worth it to risk it for the brisket. Sorry, I'm in a punny mood today. Maybe because this restaurant is ha lol. You know, like ha lol. All right, sorry about that. Hmm. Hmm. Wow, guys, I am seriously impressed. I mean, not that I didn't have high expectations, but mostly I've eaten at so many great Jewish delis on this channel, including out of the country. And I would put this sandwich up there with any of them that I ate. It was just that good. All right, time to relieve this pastrami sandwich from its vertigo of being at an angle this whole time. And it is time to take a bite of the David's Brisket House pastrami. And it looks extremely fatty and delicious with delicious spice bark. Nice touch of mustard. Okay, yeah, I mean, I guess the mustard could be a little more even, but I have more mustard here to fix it if I need to, so no big deal there. And a wonderful succulent looking color. So after that corned beef, my expectations for the pastrami are higher now, so can't wait to dive into this. Kind of reminds me of the pastrami at Harold's Deli in Edison, New Jersey. Let's try one more bite. Hmm. You know, it looks good, but looks aren't everything. And while this is definitely a very good sandwich, I think outside of New York, this would probably be the best pastrami sandwich in any other city in the whole world, probably. But the pastrami, I actually don't prefer as much as I prefer the corned beef, which is crazy for me to say because I'm not usually as big on corned beef. I usually much prefer pastrami. But for me, in this case, uh, the corned beef did it for me more and the pastrami, at least at this establishment, a little bit less so. For me, the best part about the corned beef was just how fall apart in your mouth it was. Like the thing really, really came apart without much effort, as I showed you. But the pastrami, yeah, as you can see, the pastrami is a little bit stretchier. I mean, when I really pull, it will eventually come apart. But as you can see, it's got more tug to it, you might say. This pastrami kind of has parts of unrendered fat uh, as well as sinew and stuff that kind of makes some parts of it a little bit chewy, like a gristly, something that you have to chew past kind of fat, which is not really for me. The spicy bark is great. It's got great flavor and it really offsets a lot of the things that I'm slightly finding issue with. But I would say just in general, this inside of the pastrami is rather fatty and rather soft, while the outside is a little bit more dry and rubbery. But like I said, still very good. I mean, if this was a pastrami sandwich anywhere else in the world that's not New York City, it would be a home run for sure. For this pastrami sandwich though, I mean, with the corned beef, I totally forgot to even mention the mustard. But for this pastrami sandwich, um, since the meat is a little bit more chewy and the flavor and the texture is a little bit less balanced, you kind of end up tasting the mustard more. Like you feel like you need that mustard to add more spice and to really balance out the flavor more and add more of like a strong flavor. Actually, the flavor of the meat is quite good. And I really like the spice flavor as well on the uh, bark, but it's just that it is a little bit more chewy. For me, it's all about the corned beef here. Before we end the video, just one quick thing I gotta do. Uh, hi, excuse me? Yeah, I just wanted to let you know that the corned beef sandwich was very, very good. I, I think it might have been one of the best I've had, actually. And I've eaten a lot, so I even came all the way from New Jersey to try this place. So, yeah, so thank you so much. Thank you for that. So, yeah, I just wanted to leave some live feedback while we're here. But, Anyways, guys, I think that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. And as always, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and learned a thing or two. Have you guys been to David's Brisket House before? What do you think of it? And what are your favorite places for pastrami and corned beef and this Jewish deli style food? Let me know in the comments because great minds eat alike. If you like my videos, as always, like and subscribe. That way you stay up to date whenever I post another video. I still have stomach to finish a few bites of this, if not all of the bites of this. So everybody, until next time, I'll see you later.